Okay, my little degenerates. Okay, my little degenerates. We gonna do something a little damn differently. Usually, usually, I like to complete a game and then talk about it. Even if I didn't enjoy the game, I like to beat it and talk about it. And I actually sometimes like to actually play the game before even talking about it. But this time we're gonna do something a little different. When talking about the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, I did not play the game. Yes, I know. Get your pitchforks. Uh, X out the video. I know. Um, I know a lot of people is going to discredit what I'm saying. Because they don't want to hear this shit. They don't want to hear what I have to say. But I'm going to say what I have to say. You know. And you can disagree or agree. Or you can just X out the video. Uh, but I got to say some stuff. Uh, and there might be spoilers in this video. So keep in mind. Uh, the Suicide Squad. Kill the Justice League. What do I think of it? After watching a nine hour playthrough of the game. So I've seen pretty much everything the game has to offer. And I have to say. This is the most overwhelming game of 2024 I've seen so far. Like I am very overwhelmed with the game. You know, I could definitely see why people would love this game. I could definitely understand if people are enjoying the game. There's some aspects of the gameplay. I was like, oh, especially the traversal. Uh, all the characters have different traversal options. And it just looks cool. But man, the rest of the game. Oh my goodness. What happened, bro? Rocksteady. Oh my goodness. You know, I, I'm very going to be hard on this game. Mostly for the story. Because of the pedigree that Rocksteady is as a company. Rocksteady to me is not just any company. These guys are the pioneers. The guys that showed us how comic book video games. I don't mean just comic book video games. Scratch that. How licensed video games should and could be handled. You know. These guys nailed it with Arkham, Arkham Asylum, you know, and then they said, fuck it, we gonna go the extra distance with Arkham City, and then they were like, all right, you know, we gonna go even further with Arkham Knight, and they knocked it out of the park three times, I would honestly say two times, because I'm not a huge fan of Arkham Knight, however, there's some good moments in Arkham Knight, so there's that, so these guys have a huge pedestal in the gaming landscape, these guys invented the free flow combat that was used in multiple other games. Hell, the fucking amazing franchise for Spider-Man used that same combat model. And no one's been able to recreate it as good as the uh, as Rocksteady. Only one that, that, that comes to mind that has mastered it is um, the Shadow of Mordor team. So, yeah, like, like these games are like the quintessential comic book games and i always say this i always say this. if it wasn't for if it wasn't for batman walking spider-man wouldn't web swing because without the arkham trilogy spider-man wouldn't the uh Somniac spider man games would not exist without without the arkham franchise hell the Somniac team already said it. they they took huge inspiration from the arkham universe and the arkham game to craft their own universe and to craft their own game so to me the arkham trilogy is that definitive video for comic book fans you know hell i wouldn't even argue like hogwarts legacy wouldn't be nearly as good without the arkham franchise so a lot of things were riding on the next game that rocksteady was and when we all found out that it was like it was going to be a, a suicide squad game i think all of us got excited i think everybody unanimously was excited for the next rocksteady game and then we found out it was a live service game and that completely changed everyone's fucking mind it, it honestly it was like kind of like exactly how i felt when the avengers game um was announced you know when the avengers game was announced we all unanimously was like nope <laughs> like you don't want a live service game you know Granted, I did stick with that game until Spider-Man came out, but there's that's neither here nor there. Um, so, to a lot of people, you know, Rocksteady holds a high level. And to me, after watching nine hours of this game, I'm very overwhelmed. You know, I, I'm very much in the camp that thinks this game 
does not meet up a par of what Rocksteady set out. Despite there having a lot of good moments, I don't think it does enough to really make it stand above any of the Spider-Man games. I don't even think it's better than Guardians of the Galaxy. I think this is the weakest, I, I don't even think they could fall this low. The weakest comic book video game I've seen in a quite a long time. And I'm mostly just talking about story. You know, I'm mostly just talking about story. Gameplay wise, I think the gameplay's fine. Um, the best thing I love about the gameplay is the traversal, but for me, the story is where the game just is like, like, what the fuck were they thinking? And before anybody starts and say, oh, well, you're just mad because they killed the Justice League. Uh, the Justice League uh, gets killed, and oh, it's on the title of the screen. What were you expecting? It's called Kill the Justice League. Why were you expecting them not to kill the Justice League? Motherfucker, shut the fuck up. Please shut the fuck up. This has nothing to do with them killing the Justice League. In fact, that's a cool fucking premise. That's the most dopest premise of all time. The simple fact that the Suicide Squad, the D to, I want to say C-list villain team, has to go and kill the most heroic and iconic superheroes of DC landscape. You know, they're the underdogs. Everyone loves an underdog story. You know, me personally, I love an underdog story. That's fucking dope. That's the that's the coolest premise anybody could come up with. So I was looking forward to that. But Rocksteady made the cardinal sin. They made the wrong, wrong mistake. That means that this game is a continuation of Arkham Knight. So you know that heroic ending that Batman got at the end of Arkham Knight? You know, where he sacrificed himself? Yeah, they just say, yeah, throw that shit in the garbage. He, he's... He's back and he, he's teamed up with the Justice League and now he's a member of the Justice League. It's like, what? I'm like, what? What? So that means you throw away three games worth of storytelling, four games if you consider Arkham Origin storytelling, just to kill him off. And I'm, I'm just going to say this, that scene will... With, between Harley and him is downright, I wouldn't say disrespectful, but it's downright bad. It was nothing, it wasn't ceremonious, it wasn't anything special. I'm not even gonna use, you know, the late great Kevin Conroy as like, oh, like they should have did better because it's Kevin Conroy. No, 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 no. I am just disappointed of their execution with all the deaths in this game. Like, these are the Justice League. If you're going to kill them off, they have to die. I'm not saying they got to die heroically, but it would be nice to have at least some acknowledgement of them. It would be nice to not just have them just fall on the floor. The, the, the Suicide Squad looks over their dead body and then starts cracking jokes or shit. It would be nice to have the, the Suicide Squad actually contemplate whether or what they did was right or wrong reflect on the weird relationships they've had with the heroes and now that they're gone like how does that make them feel like it would be so nice to have these moments and i think a prime example of that would be the flash and 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 captain boomerang you know flash and captain boomerang despite them being enemies they have a mutual respect for one another. And instead of honoring that and having people who are not familiar with the Flash lore and Flash as a character, what did they decide to do? Oh, well, let's just make a joke of, you know, fucking after defeating the Flash, have Captain Boomerang piss on the fucking Flash. Oh, and by the way, the whole members of the do the Suicide Squad are just like, yo, congratulations, man. You got a big dick. And like, yeah, like, we salute you, bro. Like, like it's like, what? And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can't have funny moments. I love the jokes in this game. I think this game has, like, some of the best jokes and then some of the lamest jokes. Like, it's very inconsistent. But there's some funny moments, especially with King Shark. It's like... He's trying to be like to me. He's like, like you look at him. He probably is a little scary, but he's so adorable and he's funny. Harley, all of them are have funny moments in this game. 
and it's like really cool and i could kind of see a camaraderie with them but man it's just like like there's no moments where no one ever sits down and have a serious moment it's like incredibly it's in, in, in really incredible that they don't do anything interesting with these characters or try to deconstruct them and 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 it almost reminded me of like i don't even want to go into like neil Druckmann, but it's really like just some shit that i think neil Druckmann would get a kick off of like this unceremonious death of the heroes like like it's like wow it's like huh and no like deconstruction of these villains and how they feel about them nothing like that and that's sad and i think what even makes the story even way worse is near the end when they try to do the whole live service model so for those that don't know and again spoilers um the suicide squad kills brainiac and then all of a sudden they're like no well 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 this is a live service game, so it can't end of you just killing one Brainiac. You kill one out of 12 Brainiacs. So the rest of the season is you going and find these other Brainiacs and fucking killing them because we introduced multiverse. And it's like, how the fuck you guys introduced multiverse when this shit should have been a fucking multiverse story? This should have been an Elseworlds story. And it's like, this is how you're going to end the game off on multiverse and like going and kill these other fucking brainiacs that's lame that is lame and there's no there's no lead up to it there's not even a tease that oh like maybe the justice league is gonna come back because shout out and shout outs to uh comics historian me and him kind of had the same idea that oh maybe like the Justice League is being a little captured somewhere and or in another alternate dimension. They're captured and you're going to be able to save them. And I'm just sitting there in my head. I'm like, that would be cool. But then it makes all the deaths completely trash in this game. Like Wonder Woman's death, which is the best death in the whole game because she gets an actual ceremonious death. And she actually inspires the, the Suicide Squad to keep fighting. Oh, well, that death is irrelevant. If you introduce multiverse and you introduce that the Swiss, um, that the Justice League is still alive, so it's like, what the fuck is the point? Like nothing matters in this game. This game feels like nothing really matters. And you know what pisses me off the most? You know what pisses me off the most about this game is that it's like genuinely there's some genuinely good moments. I genuinely like the facial models and the voice acting oh my goodness everyone's killing it like look at harley quinn's face like when she emotes it's premium shit like like this you could clearly tell they spent like a good seven years working on mocap because it's that good like the facial models and like the way how the city metropolis looks it looks futuristic but also something around across like the 1970s and 80s like it really looks like a futuristic world set in modern time and, and it looks fucking fantastic uh, uh, just a lot of this game is uh, is has a lot of interesting moments you know and, and again i don't, don't let me go back to like voice acting everyone's killing it in a role you know amanda waller I, i've seen this actress and so many fucking games now it's hilarious but i love her and she kills it as amanda walla of course harley quinn uh tara strong voicing fucking harley quinn again killing it as always king sharks actor uh fucking uh captain boomerang um killing it these guys are killing it and they're great everyone's killing it. and of course kevin conroy oh my god they do this cool little thing in the game but you know in the Arkham franchise, like you know how like w the intercoms, like Joker would be saying some creepy shit on the intercoms and like alerting the enemies of your position. They literally do it in this game. They literally do it, but with Batman. And it's the coolest shit hearing an evil Batman played by Kevin Conroy. Rest in peace, the GOAT, bro. He kills it as an evil Batman. It's creepy. One of my favorite moments in the game 
is after they defeat the flat or after flash gets um defeated they're trying to carry his body and they go into like the the batman exhibit and oh my goodness that whole segment is fucking insane it's literally just the predator mode from the arkham trilogy but now you're getting the the villains perspective of it it is so cool him putting down uh explosive gel uh you go through a gargoyle he'll grab you up and like do the the legs take down you open the door and you think you escape he comes in kicks you out like it is so sick i was like die like why couldn't they just make a whole game of this like this is sick and it shows that and this is why i can say i don't think any of the things that that rocksteady does was really malicious they're just poorly misguided poorly 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 misguided and it breaks my heart because there is something that could have been amazing about this game but again, the story just takes a nosedive as we get further on, further along. There's nothing really happening. None of these characters get to be fleshed out. It's just kind of like, oh, we're just going along, killing the Justice League. That's it. You know, as for the gameplay, and I could just give a little bit of what I've seen. I think the gameplay is actually not that bad. Uh, I Again, I think the best part of the gameplay is the traversal. Everyone has a different tra traversal. Thing. like harley like swings on batman's little glider thing um fucking uh fucking dead shot uh has a rocket and he like flies uh and king shark jumps like fucking um the incredible hulk and captain boomerang throws his boomerang uh and runs very fast because he has like a speed force gauntlet like cool mechanical stuff and then later on uh, i know at the time of this recording joker's not out but joker uses uh is gonna be using an uh, umbrella like he's mary poppins up in this bitch i'm I i'm like wow the traversal mechanics is good uh, i just think like the gameplay could use a little bit more more variety that that was my main critique while i was watching i was like man you're like fighting the same villains the same arch enemies you're just doing the same shit and it's not that well paced and it's like ugh, it's not very well done in my opinion it almost reminds me the same problems the avengers have you were just fighting wave of the waves of enemies i think the only difference is at least with the avengers the avengers combat loop with with the combat and how everybody fights is completely different like cap does not fight like like how hawkeye fight and Hawkeye doesn't fight like how Spider-Man fight. Or Spider-Man doesn't fight like how fucking Black Panther fight. Everyone combat abilities is completely different. Hulk is like a fucking maniac in that game. Depending on how you build. And then that's where, where most of the diversion is going to be. Is the like build variety. But I just wasn't seeing it. And that was like 9 hours of gameplay I was watching. So I don't know. But... To wrap up this video, you know, again, if you love the game, please continue playing it, talk about it, write about it. Don't let what I'm saying stop you. However, as someone who really loves these characters, love the Arkham trilogy to death. Literally, Arkham City is one of my favorite video games of all time. To see what Rocksteady has done to these characters that we've that we've been with for almost 10 plus years. To see that we got introduced to the Justice League and then they're killed off unceremoniously and also kind of insultingly in some cases. And to see what they've done and turned this into a live service game that, by the way, the story's not even complete. You have to wait until 12 seasons in order to complete the story. To me, it's just like, it's, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace to the name of Rocksteady. You know, Rocksteady deserves better than that. And, and as someone who really, really, really respects Rocksteady and what they've done for uh, Spider-Man in particular, you know, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to see that this is the game they came up with. This was the game they waited nine years to give us. Like... 
very heartbreaking. Very heartbreaking. But it is what it is, man. Anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, please comment, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let me know. If you enjoy Suicide Squad story, let me know in the comment section below. What do you think of this fucking game? Post your comments on, on below. And until next time, guys, stay safe and have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. Later.